President Trump says he received a letter from Jack Smith saying he's a target of a grand jury investigation on January 6th. Do you have a reaction to that? Yeah, it's absolute bullshit. Yeah, that's my reaction. Um, this is the only way that the Democrats have to beat President Trump is to arrest him, smear him, charge him with ridiculous charges, all in a cover-up of Joe Biden's crimes, Hunter Biden's crimes. It's, it's unbelievable. It's hard to even recognize that this is our country. Um, the American people are going to be furious. And, and what Jack Smith is doing is, is the weaponized government. And he's weaponizing the Department of Justice against President Trump in a complete lie about President Trump and January 6th. Either Christian conservative Marjorie Taylor Greene forgot to read her Bible Tuesday morning, or she just can't control herself when it comes to defending her Lord and Savior, Donald Jesus Trump, when it comes to criminal charges. Yeah, there are more charges. Donald Trump posted on Truth Social, his fledgling social media site, to reveal this. I'm paraphrasing. He says he received a target letter from the Department of Justice, from Jack Smith's office, Sunday night, saying that he is indeed a target of the January 6th grand jury investigation. So a target letter, as we know, is usually a signal that indictment is on the horizon. Trump goes on to say that he's been given just four days to report to court. Now, we haven't confirmed that yet. The Department of Justice has not weighed in yet. But Trump himself says that this always, almost always means an arrest and an indictment. He's received a target letter for the January 6th and election interference probe. It's not just about the events of the riot at the Capitol, but all that led to it. So. After legal woes over his classified documents, corrupt business practices in New York, and potential election interference charges in Georgia after that perfect phone call, Trump is looking at joining his January 6th brethren in court. So maybe this, the 100th indictment, could be the one that frees up petrified Republican presidential field into no longer being afraid of campaigning against him. What do you say, Vivek Ramaswamy? I don't think we can really move forward and heal as a country until we come to terms with exactly what happened, not just on January 6th, but in the year 2020 leading up to it. I think January 6th was the culmination of what you see when a culture censors people from speaking. That's what happened in the year 2020. Think about that. That was the 12 months leading up to January 6th. We had lockdowns in this country. Told you had to hide in your basement, stay locked down while BLM and Antifa roamed the cities of this country freely, burning many of them to the ground. Vivek is looking like a solid no here on campaigning against Donald Trump, but he wasn't even done yet. He decided to call for more political violence from the MAGA types. You have a repeated pattern of telling people they can't speak. Then when they step up and start to protest in various civil way conferences, you tell people they cannot scream. That is when they tear things down. And my concern, Charlie, is unless we reconcile ourselves with what the truth of the matter was that led to January 6th, that's really just going to be a friendly preview of what's to come in this country. Well, he's a lost cause. How about Nikki Haley? She vowed to never run against Trump while running against Trump. What I am saying is I don't kick sideways. I'm kicking forward. Joe Biden is the president. He's the one I'm running against. I'm not going to kick sideways. I don't have time for that. That's not my focus. I'm not kicking sideways in this race. I'm kicking forward. It is Joe Biden who's the president. Has this news triggered her to grow a backbone? The rest of this primary election is going to be, in reference to Trump, is going to be about lawsuits. It's going to be about legal fees. It's going to be about judges. And it's just going to continue to be a further and further um, distraction. And that's why I am running, is because we need a new generational leader. We can't keep dealing with this drama. We can't keep dealing with the negativity. We can't be sitting there focused on lawsuits over and over again. It seems like Nikki Haley's had enough of the drama and the lawsuits. No word of the deep state, a weaponized law enforcement system that only targets old, rich, white guys. But what about the heir apparent? Ron DeSantis, what say you? Difference between being brought up on criminal charges and, and doing things. Like, for example, um, I think it was shown how he was in the White House and didn't do anything while, while things were going on. Uh, he should have come out more forcefully. Of, of course that. But to try to criminalize that, that's a, diff that's a different issue entirely. And I think that we, we want to be in a situation where, you know, you don't have one side just constantly trying to put the other side in jail. Ron started by purposely misleading by claiming that Trump would only be up on charges because of his response to January 6th, not his part in it. 
And how about the, uh, we want a situation where we don't have one side that constantly wants to put the other in jail. We don't want a situation where one side constantly wants to put the other in jail. We got to get her going. I don't think she likes me too much. who was storing classified information. <laughs> it never gets old, never gets old. I guess we all have to be ready for a long and very frustrating road ahead.